guys I grew up with that worked at auto plants. Mr. President, stand there. And I want to introduce Kumar Gohatra. Who's We're our all buddies. We met one other moment ago. Emerging. Good afternoon. Hey, everybody. How are you? Good yourself, sir. OK. So, Mr. President, uh, we're electrifying our most iconic vehicles, uh, vehicles like our Mustang, uh, the Transit, uh, the F-150, which we're going to build right here. Um, but to total transition from uh, internal combustion to battery electric is going to take more than just vehicles. Uh, for example, our dealers need to be ready for the new technology. Uh, happy to say 2,300 of our, 100 of our dealers are already fully EV certified and we're growing that number. Secondly, the charging infrastructure needs to be there as the volumes grow. So we've put together one of the largest charging infrastructures in the country, uh, about 60,000 plugs, but that's not enough. So we as an industry and as a country need to invest a lot more uh, to grow that number as the volumes grow. Well, one of the things I have in my jobs plan yep. is 550,000 charging stations along our highways that the federal government will put in. Because the truth of the matter is, it's the thing that's going to jumpstart. We're at an inflection point in America. We're either going to move and take over this area, yep. or we're going to be left behind. Yep. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit like my grandfather. I, I, he died when I was six months old. My grandfather used to work for American Oil Company. His job was to go back in the in the 30s, he met work for Mr. Blaustein, and he used to go from place to place opening up gas stations because no one wanted to have a, all, this, all this gasoline and tanks underneath the ground in their neighborhoods. And that's what his job was, to open up gas stations. That's how we got to Scranton and Wilmington. And uh, it's the same basic principle. We got to, you know, you ought to be able to go across, and even though these batteries are increasing significantly the distance you can go, the power they possess, the size, the weight, is still going to take. You should be able to get in a car, electric vehicle, and drive across the country without having to worry. Precisely. Uh, that's, that's, that's where we need to go. Speaking of batteries, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. We did our first hybrid electric in 2004. Yep. The battery that was in there, you see behind you, that top of that big black box, it was... <laughs> yeah. Big, it was bulky, it was expensive. It took up the whole car. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, what you see here, Mr. President, are Heavy. The, the next generations, the second, third, and the fourth. You might, I'm not supposed to leave my spot, but you might. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can tell, they're getting lighter, they're getting uh, smaller, they're even getting less expensive. But still, the, the, a battery electric propulsion system is substantially more expensive than an internal, internal combustion system. So, for example, that battery was 200 pounds. This one is now 60 pounds. Now, uh, is that the totality of the battery that go in the... I'm this sorry? It? Is this it? No, this is for our hybrid vehicle Explorer and the F-150 hybrid. You will see down there for the, the big battery electric for F-150. That's okay, much bigger sure, than this one. That's what I was going to say. You, really, you surprised yeah. me. <laughs> no, but this is... This is you, I've learned something brand new. I thought I knew it all. <laughs> No, it's amazing. But it's amazing how far we've come. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's that. astounding. And, uh, so it's absolutely astounding. We're investing a lot in, you know, making the batteries cheaper, making them more dense in energy. And the batteries turn then the motors and the, the transaxles. My friend Elise here works at our Van Dyke plant. We're building those right here in Michigan at a Van Dyke plant. And uh, I'm going to hand it to her so she By can... By the way, you buy one of these vehicles, Pesh? you can run all electricity in your house. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. Your apartment, you can actually hook it up to your apartment. You know, right now you hook in and you, you plug into, if you have an electric vehicle or a hybrid, you plug into down in your garage an outlet, you're gonna be plugging in the other way. <laughs> that, that's it's, absolutely it's astounding. correct. We're gonna do that with our F-150. I'm Mr. sorry. Hi, Mr. President. This is, um, the Go rotor, so I'm having 40 here. rotor, yep. and this is the ED40 stator, which this rotor is placed in machine, we machine yeah. and assemble this yeah. and the mm -hmm. stator, <coughs> and this is placed inside the E-trans, yep. and the people at Fort Van Dyke are very excited and fortunate to have the opportunity to build this product for the American people, and Ron Mays, 
It's going to explain how the E-Trans is assembled. There's jobs, jobs, union jobs. Yes. Just remember the word union. Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon. How are you, man? Good afternoon, Mr. President. I am in charge as far as assembling the E-Motor transmission, which on your front half is your gearbox, the middle is your housing, and with your end cap. ISO brain of the whole situation. This is your primary dr uh, drive unit, which is sit in the front of the vehicle. This has your parking brake uh, assembly on it, which other things also. Tell we you what, man, the idea to have something this small. <laughs> incredible. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. It's, in, it's pretty incredible. I'll tell you. Thank you. <laughs> 